it's Dr. Vega again. Welcome to module three. Uh, in this module, you'll be able to, you'll be taught how to work with what teacher and to assess his or her adopter category. And by that, I'm actually referring to change theory. And in particular, Everett Rogers' change theory, or theory of adoption and diffusion of innovations, which is one of my favorite theories. Um, I know that sounds incredibly nerdy. Uh, but I'm a nerd and I, I really love his theory. I found it really useful as an instructional technology specialist in schools and it was really practical and helped me uh, implement change in my school. So it, it's, I think it's really fun and, um, and definitely one of my favorite theories. In this module, you are going to be playing the change game. And in particular, it's an online uh, game for you to play to try to implement change in an imaginary school and uh, have fun with that. You'll also be reading some websites about change theory, and that should actually influence your ability to play the change game a second time and do a better job. Uh, don't forget that in addition, uh, you, you need to work with your professional learning community to write 10 original questions that will help you identify the teacher's adopter category. And by that teacher, I'm referring to the individual that you are coaching. And in fact, um, after this module, you should begin coaching that individual. Uh, in, this mo in this particular module, though, after you have uh, worked with your PLC to write those 10 original questions, you need to create a questionnaire. And then um, and be sure to deliver that to your colleague to assess his or her adopter category. Uh, are they, is she an early adopter and part of the early majority, the majority, late majority, or a laggard? And then um, also you need to complete your PLC discussion board posting, uh, work on your mystery blogger website, and then also complete the case study. You should begin uh, working on A3, your coaching journal, and you should also be finishing A2, the Individual Teacher Technology Assessment, and that is actually due at the completion of this module. Now I wanted to share you, with you another favorite spot of mine here on KSU's campus. Uh, in particular, I'm in front of the Social Sciences Building, uh, a lovely building, new structure, lots of fabulous new technology inside. Uh, an excellent place to learn using technology, but more importantly, well, not more importantly, but for the point of this video, I wanted to show you this sculpture. This is called Spaceship Earth, an unusual name for a sculpture, but nonetheless, it costs over a million dollars and it's 175 tons of concrete and steel. Uh, it's intended to remind future generations of the Earth's fragility. Uh, and it was sculpted by a Finnish sculptor named Eno, E-I-N-O. Now, the irony of this sculpture is actually in its meaning and then a mysterious event that happened to this sculpture. Now, I told you that it's supposed to remind future generations of the Earth's fragility, but on December 28, 2007, this sculpture mysteriously collapsed in the middle of the night. And uh, the uh, sculptor had to actually rebuild it and adjust some of the supports at the bottom, at the base. And so I'll, um, in this video, I'll put an original picture, a picture of the destruction, and then, as you can see, the current structure. And you can compare how it's changed. And you might wonder who's that figure at the top of the sculpture. That's actually David Brower. He is a famous environmentalist. And, um, and so I encourage you to look it up and read up on him. There's a bee. Ah, there's a bee. Okay, see you in the next module.